In this video, we're going to cover blood typing that we do in the typical lab class. Blood typing is interesting because we can donate blood, but we can also receive blood if we need it. And in order to do that, we need to know blood type. So in this case, we have B positive blood, which means these red blood cells in this bag make the B marker and the RH marker, so we call it B positive. In order to figure out your blood type, then, we need to know the markers that you make on the surface of your red blood cells. The markers that we typically care about are the A, B, and RH marker, and these stick off the surface of your red blood cells like little flags. Antigens is simply another name for markers. Your genetics in your DNA instruction book determines which markers you'll make. In this red blood cell, we have all three markers, so this person is AB positive blood type. But most of the time, we don't know your markers, we don't know your blood type. So we need to figure out what markers your red blood cells have on their surface. So that's what we're going to do when we determine your blood type. So in order to do this, we're going to need to take advantage of something called antibodies. Antibodies are defense proteins that your defense cells, your immune cells, can make in order to protect you. So little immune cells, specifically called lymphocytes, when they detect something bad in your body, they can make these defense proteins in order to protect you. So let's look at an example of this. So these lymphocytes, specifically called B cells, their job is to sit around and wait, and if you're ever infected with something, a pathogen or a bad guy, they can respond by making antibodies. So let's say you're infected with this bacteria, and on the bacteria's surface is a little marker, and let's say it's a carbohydrate. So your lymphocytes will recognize that marker, or antigen, as being from something foreign, a bad guy. And their response is going to be to make lots and lots of antibodies, specific antibodies that can detect and bind to that marker molecule on the bacteria, and only that marker molecule. And what it does is it identifies the bacteria as bad and helps our immune system defend us and destroys those little bacteria. Well, what does this have to do with blood typing? Well, again, in blood typing, we need to figure out what molecules or markers you're making on your little erythrocytes. And scientists thought, why not use antibodies? Antibodies, after all, are designed to detect and bind to only specific molecules. So if you take a mouse and expose a mouse to the markers from human red blood cells, the A, the B, and the RH marker, the little mouse's immune system basically identifies those markers as something foreign, maybe from a bacteria or an invader, and makes defense antibodies against those markers. So now you have a mouse making B antibodies, A antibodies, and RH antibodies against the human red blood cell molecules. And so for lab, we simply buy these antibodies from a scientist. So for lab, we're going to take three small drops of your blood and place them on a card. Remember that the, each drop has your little erythrocytes suspended in there. Your erythrocytes have markers on their surface. We just don't know what those markers are yet. In order to determine which markers you have, we're going to add a specific antibody to each drop. The first drop will get anti-A antibodies, or simply A antibodies for short. The second drop will get B antibodies, and the third and final drop will get RH antibodies. So now these little antibody molecules are mixing in there with your blood, and they're able and designed only to detect one specific red blood cell marker. So we give it a few minutes for the suspension to mix, and then we watch for a reaction. And in this example, the second drop of blood starts to clump up. The clumping of the blood suggests a reaction between the antibodies and markers on the red blood cells. Since the second drop received the B antibodies, it means that those little antibodies are detecting a marker, and since they only bind to the B marker, it means that this blood sample has the B markers on its surface. The A antibodies and the RH antibodies did not react with markers, suggesting that this person only has the B markers on their red blood cell surface. So we would call their blood type B negative. They have the B marker, but none of the other markers on their red blood cell. So in lab, we're using these antibodies in order to identify the markers. If the antibodies recognize a marker in your blood sample, they basically clump up the little red blood cells. We call that clumping agglutination. 
So in your body, antibodies are protecting you, but in lab, the antibodies are simply being used to detect the markers on your red blood cells. So let's look at some student examples. Kelly's blood, we have three drops of Kelly's blood. We add A antibodies to the first drop, B antibodies to the second drop, and RH antibodies to the third drop. We wait a few seconds or minutes and we watch and see if there's a reaction. The A antibodies do not, do not detect any markers. The B antibodies do not detect markers and the RH antibodies do detect something and we can see that by clumping. This suggests that Kelly's red blood cells have the RH marker. She lacks the A, she lacks the B marker, so we call her blood type O. She has the RH marker, so we call her O positive. Again, the antibodies look and seek out the markers, and since she reacted with the RH, she was RH positive. Let's look at another example. We have three drops of Joe's blood. We add A antibodies. We add B antibodies and we add RH antibodies. Again, we wait a few minutes and we see what happens. The A antibodies cause clumping, which suggests the A markers are present. The B antibodies didn't detect anything and there's no clumping. The RH antibodies cause clumping, again suggesting that the RH marker is present. So in Joe's blood, we have the RH markers and the A markers. So his blood type is A positive. You just simply look at which antibodies react with the person's blood. In this case, the A and the RH reacted, so he has A markers and RH markers and lacks the B markers. All right, that's it. See you guys.